Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and many other ones. What are we doing today? This is multivariable calculus series. We're in chapter zero, differential equations. We're now going to do section 0 0.2, and that's separable ordinary differential equations. What are we going to do specifically this lecture? We're going to do the definition of separable ordinary differential equations, and we're going to do some examples and solutions. Let's do the definition. Okay, for the definition, remember what we're going to do in this course when we're doing multivariable calculus. This is just a baby introduction to differential equations, so we're going to only focus on first order and second order, mostly linear ones. But we can deal with a specific category of first order nonlinear differential equations and solve those using this technique if they are separable. What is the definition of separable? A differential equation dy dx equals f of xy is called separable if we can write this function of two variables as the product of a function of just x, m of x, and a function of just y, n of y. And therefore, f of xy can be written as the product m of x times n of y, and our differential equation will look like this. The idea of why we've called it separable is what we can now do is as long as n of y is not zero, we can divide by this and bring the differential up and integrate both sides and we can separate the variables dy and y's and x's and dx's with the equation, the equal sign. So we're going to separate the variables using the equal sign. Let's do that. Okay, given a separable differential equation, if we have that the differential equation, first order differential equation is separable, then this is why we did get its name. What we've done is we've used the equal sign to separate the y dependent y variable and the independent x variable. Then we integrate both sides. And if we let big N of y be the antiderivative of 1 over N of y, and we let big M of x be the antiderivative, again, in one of your calculus classes along the way, you had to do a bunch of techniques of integration. Now you'll see why we want this as an application. We can solve differential equations. And so we want big M of X to be the antiderivative of M of Y. If we do this, we obtain essentially the what we call the implicit solution. And then in the final step, you'll see we'll do this depending on which one we get in our examples when we do them in a second. But if n of y is a one-to-one -one and onto function, so it has an inverse, we can invert and we can get an explicit solution. to the differential equation, which was separable. Let's do this process now. This is the steps of solving a separable ODE. Step one, separate the dependent variable y and the independent variable x. Step two, integrate both sides. Step three, if possible, solve explicitly for y. Step four will be, I'll also do one, but if we again have initial conditions, we use the initial conditions to find this constant of integration. Now that you can see that there is one. Let's do some examples. For example, one, it says let k be any real number, and we want to solve the exponential differential equation. What that says is the derivative is the rate of change of y with respect to x. And what that's saying is we're looking for a function who's directly proportional to itself when we have that rate of change. So what functions give its derivative are directly proportional to itself is what we're asking in this differential equation. This is the exponential one, and it's called exponential already because it, we've already done this, and the solutions are going to be exponential functions, and we'll get exponential growth or decay. Let's solve explicitly using our methods. Solution. Step one. Separate the variables. In our case, we don't have any x variables. It's a, or it's a constant times x. And therefore, we're going to write this as dy over y equals k dx. Step two, integrate both sides. When I do that, I get the integral of 1 over y dy equals the integral of k dx. Now you can see we're going to have to use techniques of integration to integrate both of these. Let's do that. For the first integral, we have that this is the case specifically where it's y to the minus 1. So we get the natural log of the absolute value of y. 
on the other side this is just k times x is a zero so we use the power rule and we get kx plus a constant of integration now what we do that with that this is the implicit solution this is the n of y equals m of x plus c this is what they're talking about i found the antiderivative of one over y and i found the antiderivative of k once I have that now, this is the implicit solution. Because log, we can exponentiate. Logarithm is the inverse of exponential. We can exponentiate both sides. You can get an explicit solution for y. Doing that, we get e to the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to e to the kx plus c. Now that we have that, I cancel e in logarithm, and I use exponential laws. This is if and only if y of x is equal to e to the c times e to the kx. We're almost done, but because it did give us initial conditions, we now use initial conditions to find out what c is. First of all, so for simplicity, I'm going to let a equal e to the c, and it can be any positive real number, just like e to the c can. And so we have, basically, I'm cheating a little bit, but that says a is equal to e to the c it's a number it's a positive real number times our function now what we do is specifically find a, what a is from our initial conditions let's do that okay if this is our function now we want to find explicitly the unique solution where we have this a value explicitly based on our initial conditions i've now color coded remember x naught is just a real number and y naught is just a real number and when we're looking for the what a is we set we put x naught wherever there's x in the equation and we put y naught wherever there was a y in our equation doing that we have that y naught is equal to a e to the k x naught what does that give us explicitly that says that y naught is equal to a e to the k x naught and then we have to solve for k is or for a is what we want what does that tell us that tells us that we get y naught e to the negative k x naught is equal to a now what am i going to do with that i'm going to put that in there and clean it up and give the explicit solution what does that tell us from this and our original function we can put the a there that tells us that y of x explicitly is y naught e to the negative k x naught times e to the k x Using an exponent law again, I'm going to write this as y of x is equal to specifically y naught e to the k x minus x naught. This is the explicit solution to the exponential ODE dy dx equals k times y. Okay, for the second problem, what we're going to do is solve this separable differential equation again. So step one, solution. I won't write the steps explicitly. I might just say them and annotate them. Step one, separate the variables. This time, what do I get? I get dy y squared equals e to the x dx. I've separated the variables. And then what do I do? I integrate both sides. This gives me the integral of y squared dy equals the integral of e to the x dx plus the constant of integration. Integrating explicitly, I get one third y cubed equals e to the x plus c. Once I do that now, I'm going to solve explicitly for y. This gives me, I'm going to call this c tilde. We're going to multiply both sides by 3. That gives me y cubed equals 3e to the x plus c, where we've let c equal 3c tilde. Multiplying by 3 doesn't change it. If c can be, c tilde can be any real number, so can c. So we still just have a constant. We've absorbed the 3 into there. Now taking the third root, we get y of x explicitly is the third root of 3e to the x plus c, a constant of integration. Now we use our initial conditions to find out what c is explicitly. That tells us c is, first of all, it tells us 2 is going to be equal to y of 0. So I put 0 wherever x is, and that's going to be the third root of 3 times e to the 0 plus c if and only if this gives me 2 equals the third root of 3 plus c solving for c now is what we wanted i third root both sides that gives me 
2 to the 3 is equal to 3 plus c, or the, what does that finally give me? 8 minus 3, which is 5, is equal to c, so c is 5. We're solving an equation now. Go back and solve it however you want. c is 5. What do I do with that? Now that we've found the unique constant of integration, we have a unique function which passes through this point, 0, 2, and solves this differential equation. What is that? Explicitly, it's given by y of x equals the third root of 3e to the x plus 5. This is the explicit solution. Let's do one more. All right, as the last example of the video, I didn't put initial conditions. Let's just focus on the separable equations technique. Every time you have it, you have to see that somehow you can separate the x and y's. In this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to write this as if and only if divide by 3 minus y and leave the 1 over x there. This gives me 1 over 3 minus y dy equals 1 over x dx. I've separated the variables integrating both sides now. You can cheat and skip writing that out again. So I will. That gives me, be careful, I have to take a negative out possibly of this or what we're going to write as w is 3 minus y, therefore negative dw is equal to dy. I actually get negative dy, but I don't have negative dy, I just have y, so substitution rule is the first integral that I'm going to use. The second one is natural logarithms. Then what that gives me is if and only if the natural log of the absolute value, what was w? w was 3 minus y is equal to negative the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Again, I've just absorbed the negative into this concept of integration, but if I want to keep it, Solving for y explicitly, this is the implicit solution. But explicitly, I can solve for y because I have an inverse of logarithm. Let's do that. That will give me exponentiating both sides, is what I'm doing. It's giving me e to the ln 3 minus y. Those will cancel, but be careful here. I have to put the expo number on the outside as exponent on the inside. So this is e to the ln. 1 over x absolute value times e to the c using exponent law. Again, this will now cancel, and this gives me 3 minus y is equal to 1 over x times e to the c, or I can write this as y equals 3 minus 1 over x e to the c as the explicit solution. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and a bunch of others on our channel. I'm Adrian. This is the Tutor Wizard. See you next time.